Who was Charles Frederick Worth? Noted for creating one of the foremost fashion houses of the 19th and early 20th centuries, as well as being the father of haute couture. One cannot study fashion history in the 19th century without knowing the legacy of this extraordinary man. He was born October 13th in 1825 in the Lincolnshire market town of Bourne to William and Anne Worth. Some sources believe he was their fifth and final child, while others believe he was the family's third child. It is understood, though, that he was the only child other than his brother, William Worth III, to survive to maturity. After ruining their family financially, their father left them, leaving their mother impoverished without financial support. At the age of 11, Charles was quickly sent to work at a printer's shop, and in a year he moved to London to become an apprentice at the department store of Swan and Edgar in Piccadilly. It would be seven years later Lewis and Allenby, another leading British textile store, employed Mr. Worth. In 1846, Charles moved to Paris. He arrived there speaking no French, with only five pounds in his pocket. His mother, Anne Worth, died in Highgate, London in 1852. During this time, Worth was a sales assistant at Gallon O.P.'s and C., a prestigious Parisian firm that sold silk fabrics and textiles to the court's dressmakers, also supplying cashmere shawls and ready-made mantles. It was during this time that he met the woman he would marry in 1851, Marie Vernet. At the shop, Worth began sewing dresses to complement the shawls. At first, they were simple designs, but his expert tailoring caught the eye of the store's clients. Eventually, Gallen granted Worth the permission to open a dress department, this being his first official entrance into the world of dressmaking. He helped to build the company's international reputation by exhibiting prize-winning designs to both the Great Exposition of 1851 in London and the Exposition Universelle in Paris four years later. Now having two sons, he was eager to establish himself, and by this stage in his life, he was a known name. He soon acquired a young Swedish business partner, Otto Gustav Boberg. And in 1858, they set up a business at 7 Rue de la Paix, naming the establishment Worth and Boberg. It was Worth's wife who played a key role from the beginning of their venture, helping to sell the clothes by introducing many new customers to their business. From this point forward, success came quickly, when in 1860, he designed a ball dress for the Princess de Metternich, which was admired by Empress Eugenie who demanded the name of the dressmaker and to see him the very next day. In the memoirs of Princess Matternick, she had written, And so, worth was made and I was lost, for from that moment there were no more dresses at 300 francs each. Quickly, worth became the favorite designer and dressmaker of the Empress. Worth offered a new approach to the creation of couture gowns, offering a plethora of fabrics and an expertise in tailoring. By the 1870s, his designs were recognized around the world and in high demand by those in high society. During this time as well, his name and designs were appearing in fashion magazines, being read by a wider audience. He was the first to replace the fashion dolls which had been popular to show off the clothes with live models in order to promote his garments to clients. His wife was an early model in the 1850s, leading some to describe Vernet as the world's first professional model. Worth was also noted perhaps the first to sew branded labels into his clothing. He also changed the dynamic of the relationship between customer and clothing maker, where previously the dressmaker would attend the client's home for a one-on-one -on -one consultation Clients generally would attend Worth Salon in Rue de la Paix for a consultation. Meeting here allowed for societal figures to show up in a social meeting point. 
His fashion house had begun with a staff of 50, but soon swelled to over 1,200. The creation of these dresses required painstaking attention to the detail and craftsmanship. A bodice might have up to 17 pieces of material to ensure a good fit on its wearer. The seamstresses were assigned different workshops where they specialized in, for instance, making sleeves, making skirts, or stitching hems. Most of the sewing was done by hand, although with the advent of the new and early sewing machines, this meant that some main seams could be stitched mechanically. Wealthy and socially ambitious women were drawn to Worth's showpiece creations. And soon, over time, this included American clients, the great Mrs. Astor being one of them. But truly, if you were anybody in high society America, you had Worth gowns. Worth had stated that he loved working with his American clients because his French language skills never reached fluency. And as he put it, American women have faith, figures, and francs. Faith to believe in me, figures that I can put into shape, and francs to pay my bills. While some Americans bought their Worth gowns in New York at the shop of Catherine Donovan on Madison Avenue, most wealthy Americans traveled to Paris to have their entire wardrobe made by Worth, encompassing everything from morning, afternoon, evening, and tea gowns, as well as underdress items such as nightgowns. He would even create special occasion garments, such as wedding dresses. When Worth became Empress Eugenie's official dressmaker, she had him on call constantly to create dresses for various events she attended, needing masquerade costumes, court dresses, and evening wear. For example, for the opening of Suez Canal in 1869, she had decided she needed more than 250 Worth dresses for that event alone. The prices were staggering for the time. Princess de Metternich had commented about the end of the 300 franc dress which she had ordered, and once Worth had acquired royal patronage, that same dress ended up costing her 2,200 francs. By the late 1880s, Worth had established the characteristics of a modern couture house. One biographer had noted he also successfully fostered the myth of a male-style dictator. Worth's sons ended up joining the business in 1874 to help with management, finance, and design. They soon became increasingly active, leaving Worth to take more time off in his later years, especially as his health declined. On March 10, 1895, Charles Frederick Worth died of a pneumonia at the age of 69. His funeral was held at a Protestant church, and his wife would be buried next to him just three years later. Worth was a keen collector of artistic treasures and curiosities, and it seemed little doubt that Worth had amassed a large fortune. In 1874, a visitor to his villa described an abundance of rare china, a conservatory full of exotic plants, stables full of immaculately kept horses, and his gardens contained statuaries and stones retrieved from Tuileries Palace. The House of Wirth's most successful years were those flanking the 1900s. During this span of time, women were ordering 20 to 30 gowns at a time, and by 1897, clients could now order a garment by phone, mail, or by visiting one of the many branch stores. They also displayed their garments at the 1900 Exposition Universelle in Paris. It was at this time that the company's annual turnover was placed at around 5 million francs at the turn of the century. Truly the father of haute couture, Charles Frederick Worth's memory and legacy lives on today. Thank you for watching Cultured Elegance with Faith. Please let me know your favorite fact from this video in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and consider becoming a channel member today to have access to exclusive perks. Thank you so much for watching everyone, see you in the next video.